So welcome back to Science Periodically. Thanks for tuning in to this week's installment of the show, kind of where you get to get a nice break from home isolation while getting to know the School of Science. If this is your first time tuning in, you may notice that everyone has been muted. Should you kind of have any questions or comments, you can feel free to send them through the chat. And before we kind of start this week's episode, I think we really need to address kind of what's happening in the world right now. During this time of tragedy, Chancellor Paydar wants to reinforce our commitment to inclusivity and a civil environment for all at IUPUI. So Chancellor Paydar sent out a message stating, the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, as well as the deaths and murder of other African Americans in Indianapolis, Louisville, South Georgia, and elsewhere prompted me to reach out to our campus community. At a time when so many black Americans, our friends, our neighbors, our families have lost loved ones uh, due to the novel coronavirus. This miser misery is compounded by the violence that continues against Black Americans across the country. These tragic events kind of reinforce my already strong belief in the vital importance of building an inclusive and welcoming environment that recognizes and respects people of all backgrounds and experiences. I've said before and will say again that at IUPUI, we are unwavering in our commitment to ensuring a safe and civil environment for faculty, staff, and students. I remain committed to that goal and hope you will join me in doing whatever we can to confront racism, sexism, and other barriers to our growth as a community and our progress as a nation. And again, that was Chancellor Paydar's message that he sent out the other day. We also have our guest this week, Diana Sims Harris. She has a few words to say about the matter. So Diana, if you're out there, if you wanna turn on your video camera. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Dustin. Hopefully you all can see me and hear me okay. Um, I, along with Dustin, would just echo um, Chancellor Paydar's thoughts and really share that in the School of Science, we're also committed to that safe environment that recognizes and values different identities and experiences. And um, as Dustin shared, today's having a conversation about orientation without really acknowledging our climate right now and the hurt and frustration um, didn't seem right. So we really wanted to make some space for that today in our conversation. And for many who um, are black and other people of color, you know, racism and systemic oppression is not a new, a new concept. It's something that, you know, you've been um, dealing with for your whole lives and it's been a part of your experience. I will say for me, as um, a, a white person who came from a small town coming to college, a lot of these concepts were new to me. And um, it took a lot of really time and education and continued work that I still do um, to educate myself. Um, it's a lifelong process. Um, so uh, as we get into this conversation today, I, mean, I would be happy to um, hear any other thoughts or questions uh, ar around what's happening, along with, of course, talking about orientation and our excitement about welcoming you to our community as well. Thank you, Diana, we really appreciate it. So if you guys don't know already, my name is Dustin Ryder and I'm gonna be your host today. I am a science ambassador here at the School of Science, an opportunity that will also be available to, available to you once you find yourself in Indy. It might be a bit biased here, but I kind of think it's a pretty great gig. If you haven't registered for this week's episode, Lori Hart has actually put the link down in the chat. So what you do with that, if you just click that link and register, you're going to be able to get some sweet free science gear. It kind of makes it a lot easier for us to send you that. Also, I promise college doesn't make you look like this. Uh, every week, I just kind of dress as a different scientist where you get to submit a guess on who I am. You just kind of send, up a, send us a message on Instagram or you email us with your guess, and you could be the winner of this week. We have a rainbow science shirt in light of Pride Month. And last week, oh, Last week, I was the beloved Einstein. That outfit is now on my screen. That's personally a favorite of mine so far. Using a random name picker, I have everybody put in here. So hold on one moment. We'll be able to draw the winner. All right. Press spin. All right, all right, all right. Who do we got? All right, so this winner is Ashley Remy. 
So congratulations, Ashley. You'll be getting a science bobblehead. You guys can't really see it, but we'll be getting in contact with you after the show. And we will be, um, like I said, next week, just make sure you send in our, those emails for who you think I am because we'll be sending out that rainbow pride shirt. And I asked for you guys' pet photos last week, and you guys did not disappoint me. So to bring a bit of joy to your guys' day, let's kind of start this off with your not-so-typical cat or dog. And this sweet little duck right here is Chompy. Looks like he received his acceptance letter to IUPUI. Kind of hope I get to see him in some of my science classes. Oh, there's Hazel. Hazel is an amazing corn snake right there. She's gorgeous. I love pet snakes. They're probably the best. All right, after this, we've got Jax. Oh, look at that. He's got his little treat on his nose. He does definitely deserves that for being so patient. My dogs couldn't do it. <laughs> and living up to her name, like a little queen right there, there's Cleopatra. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> she looks like she's so soft. And then we've got Gilbert. Oh, my God, Gilbert. The moment the individual sent this photo to me, I was absolutely smitten. This cat is adorable. I kind of hope you guys fall in love with it as much as I have. Now, here's Max. He's so happy. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. I love that. And it's not complete without me showing off my dogs, Henry and Sebastian the Third. They're total sweethearts, and I kind of like to think they're little models right there. So I really do appreciate you guys sending those photos in. And I really wish I could go on and on about all these animals, but we do have other news to discuss. So again, thanks for sending those in. Now let's dive into this week's news before I kind of introduce Diana yet again for an interview. So while face masks are highly suggested right now due to the coronavirus and a team at Indiana University, the School of Medicine, which is located right here on campus, actually uh, developed a new fabric that does more than block the virus. This fabric is electroceutical, meaning there are microcell batteries that create an electric field and generate a very low level of electricity. This actually kills the virus before it has the opportunity to attach to that host since the coronavirus does use electrostatic forces. The fabric effectively disarms the virus uh, the same way it originally did when they were using this as a wound dressing to prevent bacterial infections. The team is hoping to develop both a single use and a washable mask. So kind of keep an eye out for that. And they're hoping to release it in the fall. And in otter news, so sorry for that terrible pun I had to. <laughs> I wanna roll this clip right here. Otters are kind of, if it's gonna load, maybe. Oh, there we go. Otters are pretty notorious for their antics. So we kind of always wonder why do they juggle? At first, Mari Lisa Allison from University of Axter in England kind of believed this helped with their dexterity. After all, they do kind of require that paw strength and such dexterity when they're hunting. However, when Allison did three separate tests, uh, Allison wasn't able to find a correlation between this juggling and the otter's dexterity. So I suppose they were kind of right when they said all work and no play kind of makes Jack a dull boy. All right, now that we kind of touched on that recent news, we can get back down to business and that's going to be with Diana here. So as you can see, she's got a gorgeous little coworker over there. His name's Jasper. And oh, I almost forgot to mention, Diana is the Director of Student Affairs here at the School of Science. So she's gonna be able to answer any of your questions about bridge, orientation, pretty much everything. I'm, she's, she's pretty wonderful in my opinion. And don't forget to send us those questions through chat as well. So Diana, do you think you can tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, of course. Thanks so much, Dustin. So as Dustin shared, I'm the Director of Student Affairs for the School of Science at IUPUI. And I do a lot of different things in the School of Science, but uh, all of my work is really focused on programs to really help you be successful in your time here at IUPUI. Um, I also teach in our um, science, Windows on Science class, which you'll all be taking and uh, do a lot of work around coordinating that class, along with teaching and organizational leadership as well. Um, I'm from a small town in Mac uh, Macomb, Illinois. Most of you probably haven't heard of it um, in Western Illinois, uh, but I have lived and worked in Indianapolis for 14 years now. Um, oh, wow. And in, uh, Dustin asked to sh me to share a little bit about what I like to do for fun in my spare time. 
So I like to spend uh, time with my family, of course, and I've been doing that a lot in the last couple of months, which has been really great. And uh, I also like doing creative projects around my house. So one of my latest projects is behind me. I've recently um, learned, done a little crash course online and learning how to frame different artwork. So um, that's pretty gorgeous. I'm, thank you. I've got, I didn't make it, but I framed it um, mm -hmm. and have been playing around with a mat cutter and um, trying to be able to uh, display some different things. So I like to um, be creative as much as I, I can be. I also really like to read. I just started um, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor's biography, and I'm really enjoying that. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to talk with you all about orientation oh. and get to know you all better. I was going to say, you've definitely been busy during quarantine. I hope everybody <laughs> else has been as well. <laughs> all right. So now a lot of students are probably wondering about what's kind of going on with just about everything related to college right now. So from my understanding, orientation is online this year. And I do have a checklist that you sent me. So let me share that real quick. Mm -hmm. What can kind of students begin to accept, like expect from that? Yeah, so um, as Dustin shared, hopefully you've already um, seen the orientation website, but there is, if you go to orientation.iepui.edu, you can go through all of the steps of virtual orientation. So um, if you haven't signed up, it's not too late. You can still sign up for orientation. And what you're gonna do when you sign up is you're gonna first schedule your student success session um, that's going to happen a little bit later in the summer. I believe those have just started to happen and will continue to happen throughout June and July. Uh, but a lot of things you can do prior to that student success session student success session, and you might have already done that. So um, you can get right into those Jaguar launch modules. And um, you need to complete the first um, two steps in order to get ready for your advising appointment. Um, so on the orientation website, those are get started and um, prepare for your advising appointment. So after you do that, uh, we also have a Canvas site that's specific to science uh, that I add students to every day that will take you step by step through um, what to do for your advising appointment. So there's some homework you need to do as a part of that to share with your advisor um, what your interests are, if you have any incoming credit, those types of things so your advisor can best prepare you. So that homework is done on an online form. We also have a video on there that'll tell you a little bit more about science, information on our first year seminars, which you will all take as part of your first semester, and a lot of other really helpful information on um, things like placement exams, for example, all sorts of different things that are gonna help you prepare for that first semester. Um, and then once you do that, there are a few more modules you can go through on the orientation website as well that'll help you get connected, learn more about some of the resources that we have here. Uh, but there are many, many different resources uh, here on campus and in the School of Science to help you out. Hey, awesome. Thank you. So you also mentioned the advisors. So kind of what if a student really doesn't know who their advisor is? What do you kind of suggest they do? Yeah, that's a great question. So if you don't know who you're, hopefully you all have an assigned advisor. Um, if you don't, you can always send me a note and I'd be happy to take you through that and, and check on that for you. But when you log into our student information system, what when you pull up, you can see um, who your assigned advisor is. Um, you can also do that in our appointment scheduling system, which is described in orientation. It's called SAS. Um, when you go into that, your assigned advisor will pop up there right at the top for you, so you don't have to do a lot of searching. Uh, but if you're not seeing an assigned advisor, send me a message and, and I'll look into that. Uh, but our advisors in the School of Science are, are by department. 
So um, you, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to determine who your advisor is uh, because that's in um, the specific department. And oftentimes they're then divided by last names if there are multiple advisors within a department as well. Yeah, I remember because they do that in biology as well with the two Janes. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So do you kind of have any advice for the students since we are on the topic of the orientation who kind of are still in that sure. process of completing yeah, I, I, a couple piece of advice, uh, pieces of advice for you. I would say first, um, college can be a fresh start. So don't let what you were involved in or not involved in during high school really define your experience here. Um, there are so many ways to get engaged inside and outside of the classroom to really make your experience so much more rich while you're here as well. Typically for students that are in their first year, what I always recommend if you want to get involved in student organizations, and I would definitely recommend that, get involved in one organization um, within the School of Science. We have over 30 student organizations alone in science and get involved in something outside of science. It might be a passion that you have or an interest that you have or one of our identity-based organizations. There are over 400, um, I think now we're up to 500 student organizations oh, on campus. <laughs> um, so um, there's something really for everyone as well. The other thing I would uh, have you think about a little bit is it's a big transition from high school to college. So um, you are going from spending a lot of time in the classroom and a little bit of time outside of the classroom to really do your schoolwork. Uh, and that's really flipped now. So you're going to be spending um, the majority of time doing a lot of work preparing outside of class and less time in the classroom, which gives you a lot of flexibility, which is wonderful, but plan for that and think about, you know, how you might um, manage your time in this new, in this new way where um, there's a lot more personal accountability and, and responsibility that goes in there as well. And I will say you're not alone in this. We have a lot of resources to help you with that transition. Um, so make sure that you use those resources. You know, you're going to have um, recitation leaders in your classrooms. We have resource centers that are available to you where you can go to study. Um, they have an online presence as, as well in those resource centers. So um, whether you're on campus or, you know, at home, there are um, a, a lot of different ways that you can, you can use those resources to make that adjustment easier. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And especially on the topic of clubs, um, we always mention this when we're giving tours, but there's also a nap club. So if that's something you're really interested in, <laughs> you're more than welcome to. And you're not just like stuck to being in your own major for like science wise. I know a lot of students who aren't even forensic science that are in the forensic science club. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really cool. It's really awesome. We always have speakers. And I know biology club always has like Friday pizzas, which is really cool. So I always suggest those. Yeah. But again, I remember when I was in my first year and it's kind of like, I never really knew what to do. Like it was such a big change, especially coming from like a small city. So I appreciate that. Um, so I do know that the orientation is in modules. You mentioned that. So I'm kind of curious, is there like an advantage to completing them like now rather than later? Sure. I think the one advantage is if you're able to get through those first few modules to prepare for your advising appointment, you can go ahead and schedule your classes. Uh, so that's one big advantage that you can schedule your classes and know a little bit more uh, what your, your schedule is going to look like. And we do have classes that fill. So um, if you want to get a, a more preferred schedule, that's one advantage overall. Um, also just connecting with your advisor early. Uh, but even if you wait a little bit longer, we still have classes open. So uh, if you haven't met with your advisor yet, that's okay. Uh, but I would encourage you to schedule that as soon as possible so you're able to get a better idea of uh, and connect to your specific major, connect to your advisor, uh, you know, get a, get a head start on things for the fall semester. Yeah, that really does make a huge difference, especially once you start to talk to your advisor and you're able to register for classes. I, I think your first year, you're going to start to realize, like, 
what classes really work for you, if, whether it be like the 9 a.m.s or the 12 p.m.s, you, you'll probably figure that out pretty quick. So I know I did this when I was my, in my freshman year. It's called the Bridge Program. So how are they kind of doing that this year? Yeah, so um, you will be receiving a communication um, either today or tomorrow about this, but I have heard from our bridge folks that it's okay for me to share some, some new information. So really exciting this year, uh, bridge is going to be open to everyone. So oh, awesome. that's a change. Um, in previous years, you had to sign up for a specific section of bridge. Um, and if you've already signed up for a bridge section, you'll automatically be put into the program. So you don't have to do anything else if you've already signed up for a bridge section. If you um, haven't, uh, didn't sign up for a bridge section and want to participate in bridge, now that's open to you. And if you haven't signed up for classes yet, you know, it's a great consideration. So Bridge is a program that really helps you get a jump start on your experience here at IEPUI. So this year it's going to be a hybrid program. So um, we anticipate it's the week before, the week right before classes start. So we anticipate that first part of the week will be uh, things that you do online. Um, and a lot of these things will be live like we're doing today, but then also recorded. So you could, if you're not able to, to make that time, you could come back later and do that. And then towards uh, the end of the week, we um, hope to be able at that point to have some in-person experiences for you during Bridge as well. Um, so you'll do things like get the opportunity to learn about campus resources in a much more in-depth way than you do in orientation. Um, you'll be working with a peer mentor that can help you, you know, give you advice on that transition to college, much like Dustin's doing here today, um, but someone that you'd be assigned to work to with throughout the semester. Uh, you get a chance to meet other students. So, you know, you have some friends already made before classes get started. Uh, and we do a lot of things in science as well. Um, you know, we try and, and in this new virtual environment, we're still finalizing how that will work this year, but you'll be able to get connected with your faculty members or so, um, faculty panels, student panels, um, again, really talking about all of those resources um, to help you get a good start. So, you know, you're um, not coming in your first week and, you know, don't know what to expect, expect and don't know where any of your classes are. You can really participate in the bridge program and get a jump start on all of that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. That helped me out a lot. I actually still talk to a lot of the people that were in my bridge program. And I remember my mentor, mm -hmm. she was, she was a sweetheart. Um, so like Diana said, it's just a really great, awesome opportunity to meet other incoming students and become more familiar with IUPUI because you're, you're pretty much bound to get lost at some point. I know it's kind of hard to find those classes. And I know actually every semester we kind of have one of our faculty members like camping out in the uh, SLLD lobby to kind of help you out with that. So if you guys ever get lost, just always try to find that lobby or try to find somebody to ask the question because they're always very kind about that and since um it's kind of open to everybody bridges is it kind of required for them to participate and if not why should they so well, i guess uh, you answered not, that <laughs> yeah not required to participate but i like dustin would encourage you to do that um the nice thing about this year is there's a lot more flexibility with bridge um, so you can really participate, you know, in those live sessions or do things on your, in your own time if you have other commitments while, while those are happening to get all of that information so you get a good start on your, on your college career. So I would definitely encourage you to do that. Uh, and a lot of, a lot of students it's, um, who've gone through the program, the vast majority of students who've been through the program recommend it to other students. Um, so it's one of our most popular programs that we do on our campus. And um, it's also connected to your success as a student. So there's been a lot of research done that students who participate in Bridge are more successful in their coursework. Because again, you're getting that head start, making those connections before you come to campus. Yeah, I agree. So we actually have a question. Somebody stated, 
My orientation is on June 11th, but I didn't get any Zoom code. Uh, could you please help me with this issue? Um, yes, I, I can definitely follow up with you on that. I believe they're sending those out um, for those Zoom meetings close to the time, but um, I can get your information uh, and then you have my email as well and I can follow up and uh, look into your particular orientation date specifically, but you should yes. be getting that. Yeah, so just make sure you email Diana just to make sure you know and get it all settled out. She's always great at finishing up everything, so don't worry. So Mick Robbie, I use president, he kind of released an announcement regarding the fall semester since it's going to be held like online and in person. And I believe they said housing is going to be single person per room. Uh, let's kind of talk about the STEM floor in North Hall and the woman in science house in Riverwalk. Is this process going to be a little bit different than usual or like how can we kind of navigate that? So um, a lot of that planning is still happening right now. and um, what really housing and residence life and we in science are looking to or what are the guidelines that are coming from the CDC and um, how can we uh, be sure to be implementing those to have everyone be safe and healthy on our campus, but then also have a great experience as well. You know, we want you to have um, a positive and, and social experience in your first semester. So um, housing is going to single occupancy. There are some, um, ways that that'll be a little bit different and I'll talk about that. Um, but for WISH, our Women in Science House, which is apartment style in Riverwalk and Purdue House, um, which is more upper class students, something you might want to consider for your, your sophomore, junior, senior year, along with WISH, if you're not in WISH your first year, definitely consider applying for your sophomore, junior, senior year. Those are all apartments where um, there's one person per, per bedroom. So those are not impacted by the single occupancy with housing because you'll have already have one person per bedroom in those spaces. Uh, for the STEM floor, that does impact our STEM floor, um, which in, it's a more traditional residence hall where you typically have two students who are living in the same room. So that's going down to single occupancy. The exception to that is if you already know who you want your roommate to be, we are making some exceptions. Um, if you've already said, I want this person to be my roommate, um, we, can, we can get you in a double room on the STEM floor. If you haven't selected a roommate or don't have a roommate preference, then you would be um, put in a single room. So you don't have that random roommate that you, you might be assigned in another year. Um, but if you know who you want to be your roommate, you can request that and you can get in, in the same room. That's great to know. So um, when and how should they kind of be applying for that housing? Because I know a lot of people have been hesitant on doing that since we weren't really sure how it was going to go. So if you already have um, a housing application in, those are um, there are contracts that are assigned by the date that you apply, which is a little bit different because there's a scholarship application. But in general, with housing, um, when you apply, you can select one or more residential-based learning communities. So the STEM floor um, is, is one of those as one example. So if you're interested on the in the STEM floor, you would preference that. You can go back and um, change your preference um, it, uh, if you, you know, are just hearing about the STEM floor today and say, hey, I'd be interested in that, you can go back to your application and change your preference. Um, uh, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. We are getting close to being uh, full with all of our communities. So um, if you applied for housing, if you haven't applied for housing yet, I would say um, get some other plans in place, uh, especially with going to single occupancy now. Uh, that's not something that would be a guarantee, uh, but we'll do our best um, to get as many students as we can living on campus and definitely recommend our residential-based learning communities. If you're not in one uh, this year, think about it for you know sophomore junior senior year we've got a lot of great opportunities yeah for sure uh so we actually have somebody else who submitted a question uh they said where can we find the i'm assuming they meant to spell canvas uh they want to know where they can find the canvas website 
Yeah, so uh, send me an email. That's a, it's a course that you have to be added to. So Canvas is our learning management system. Um, so you might have had Canvas uh, when you were in high school or Blackboard is another uh, learning management system that's really common. So you needed to be, need to be added to the course. Uh, you should be added to that already if you registered for orientation. If not, send me a message and I'll make sure that you're added to that. You do have to accept the invitation. Uh, to get added to the course. So double check your IEPY email. I also typically include uh, if you've listed another email instructions when I invite you uh, to, to enroll in the Canvas course. Uh, but I'd, I'd be happy if you see my email. I think uh, Lori put that in the chat. Send me a message and I'll check on that. Yeah, so like I said, Lori's already put Diana's email in there. So just make sure you shoot her that message. I'm glad she was able to answer that for you. I'd have been a little confused. <laughs> so even though this could kind of go on for ages, we do kind of have a time limit. So what do you kind of suggest for students that have questions that we don't really have time to answer today? Definitely send me an email. You have my email. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. We also have, um, once you're added to the Canvas site, you'll get access to this. We do once a week. They are Thursdays at 3 p.m. Dean's office open hours. So um, I like company on there. Oftentimes I'm just hanging out in a Zoom room by myself. So if you have questions, you can stop by that Zoom room and I'll be able to answer them um, right away. Or if I'm not able to, you know, follow up. So if there's uh, a question that, that you have, I'm happy to answer that uh, as well. And um, again, email is always a great way to, to reach me. Okay, so actually we got a really good question here from Denise. Uh, I'm pretty sure Denise is the one who has Chompy too here, <laughs> the duck. But she said, can you talk a little bit more about WISH? I was recently accepted but have no idea what to expect with it. What is WISH life like and what kind of things are they involved in? Stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, WISH stands for the Women in Science House. So it is a community of 30 women that is in our Riverwalk apartment style living. Um, one of the great benefits of WISH is you're able to connect with students uh, who are all women in science. So um, typically we have students who um, are, represent a variety of different majors. Um, they are oftentimes upper class students. Uh, so they've already taken a lot of the classes that you take. Oftentimes we have students that live in WISH that um, are recitation leaders or TAs for classes that you will take at a, at a later time. So um, I know one of our residents this year is an organic two um, recitation leader and it, everyone is super excited <laughs> about being That's able fair. to knock on her door. <laughs> To be they need a little bit of help to, with him. Yes, to get help and advice. Um, so I will say if you're looking for a first year experience, WISH is probably not the best fit for you. Um, so if you want to live in a community that only has first year students, our STEM floor would be um, a better fit. But if you want really like that idea of apartment style living and getting the chance to be mentored by um, upper class students and, and have that experience, then WISH is a great experience for you. So um, even if you don't think it's right for you in your first year, we often have students who will apply as sophomore, juniors, and seniors. It's a pretty even mix in terms of uh, how many students we have. Uh, from first year students all through senior as well. Um, when you are part of WISH, you also get a scholarship that um, helps to offset some of the housing costs. It doesn't pay for all of housing, but helps with, helps with those costs. And um, you have some different requirements that go along with those scholarships. So you have to be engaged in um, the WISH uh, Council, that's a student organization that plans certain different events throughout the year, like they have a pasta panel um, with professionals and graduate and professional students. 
Uh, you also can participate in, you know, some of our research, uh, poster sessions, all sorts of great opportunities while you live in WISH. And then you're also involved in some science events and community service events as well. Yeah, WISH is a great community. I know a couple of my friends that have actually been there. Lori is also sending a couple of links out for kind of getting you for the housing and also women in science. So if you're really interested in those and we don't really have time to talk to Diana about them more, you can click those links right down here. So Diana, I really do appreciate you coming on today and kind of announcing that statement earlier. We really do appreciate it. And if you guys have any questions for Diana, her email is, of course, like we said, in the chat. So make sure you send her that email, especially for those two that we're talking about, the Canvas website and the orientation. So again, thanks again, Diana. We really do appreciate it. And she is, of yeah. course, like I said, the Director of Student Affairs. And I always like to say this, she's a wonderful person all around to begin with. So let's get back to, I got to share thanks my- Thanks so much, Dustin. Bye-bye. Oh, no, I look you. forward really to meeting everyone. Have a good rest of the day. All right, so got to get back to sharing my PowerPoint and then we can finish this up real quick. Uh, the share screen always gets me, I swear. All right, awesome. So we've done it that one real quick. And again, I just love her dog at Jasper. He's so cute. All right. So before we end this week's episode, make sure you guys register using that link that Lori Hart sent it up in the chat. This kind of, like I said, lets us know where to send some of that free science gear. And all of our prizes for last week are going to be sent out at some point this week. Also, make sure you guys submit a guess on which famous scientist you think that I am this week, and you can tune in next week for the winner. Like I said, the prize is going to be one of our rainbow science shirts in support of Pride Month. Our email is science at iupy.edu, and a nice little hint for this week is my research in the monastery gardens led to me becoming the father of modern genetics. So if you think you know who I am, make sure you guys send an email with your guess. And then we also do have a new edition called the Instagram question of the week. So we make sure you guys, so make sure you guys are sending us this week's answer. In respect for Blackout Tuesday, we will be posting this question tomorrow instead of today. We kind of just want to know what's your kind of weird and interesting skill or talent. Can you like yodel? Are you a black belt? Were you in a circus when you were like really young and now you're the coolest person in the office? <laughs> One of my coworkers. Head on over to our Instagram at IUPUI Science, and you can let us know what that weird and really cool talent is. So next week's episode of Science Periodically is definitely going to be an interesting one. We do have the director and associate professor of forensic and investigative science, Dr. Christine Picard, as our guest. Dr. Picard is a forensic entomologist who is researching blowflies and their implications for forensic investigations. So if you tune in next week and you really want to fly into the world of forensics, this episode is one you really don't want to miss, trust me. And it's not just for the forensic science people. I, my mom is just adores the topic, especially when we start to get talking about the little critters. <laughs> and again, we do have more science students and our science recruiter, Lori Hart, here to answer any leftover questions. Otherwise, you guys can tune in next week for another episode of Science Periodically. Have a great day, everybody, and thanks for tuning in.